but... <laughs> I'm Chris. And I'm Derek. We're the Meat Puppets, and we're your special guest host tonight for 120 minutes on MTV. We'll be performing live later on and showing you brand new videos from Mud Honey, Dig, Lisa Love, and the Archers of Loaf, plus the latest from Nine Inch Nails, The Rollins Band, Hole, Morrissey, Material Issue, Pavement, and lots more. Uh, Thurston Moore of Sonic Youth was scheduled to be your guest host tonight, but he was unable to make it due to personal reasons. I'm sure you can understand. Uh, hopefully he'll be by again sometime soon. But what we have to show you right now instead to kick things off is Thurston on video along with Dave Grohl of Nirvana, Dave Perner of Soul Asylum, Mike Mills of R.E.M. and Don Fleming of Gumball playing together as the Backbeat Band. Uh, it's all music from the soundtrack to the new movie about the Beatles in their early days in Hamburg, Germany, and John Lennon's friendship with his friend and then bandmate Stu Sutcliffe. The Afghan Whigs frontman Greg Dooley sings the part of John Lennon in the Backbeat Band, and here he is now talking about what that was like. From their second album, The Downward Spiral, that's Nine Inch Nails with March of the Pigs here on 120 Minutes. We're the Meat Puppets, and we're your guest hosts tonight. We've got a new album out called Too High to Die, and it's our eighth. It was produced by Paul Leary, mixed largely by Dave Jordan. Jordan, excuse me. And then was done in Memphis, Tennessee, and... Uh, we spent uh, about two months doing it. Uh, all three of us helped doing it. This is right. That was our requirement. It's, well, uh, we were making it's it. what we do. I, uh, I roomed with uh, Paul and Stuart Sullivan, the engineer on the project, and each morning I would get up and make them a delightful breakfast featuring my incredibly stunning omelets. And I'd like to invite you, Mr. and Mrs. TV fan, to pop by any time you're in Memphis or mm. anywhere else for mm. eggs. Eggs, dubious, dubious creatures that they are. Um, They're what's for breakfast. Yeah, they have eggs in Memphis, and we ate some while we were making our album. We'll be performing live later on, too, but right here, it's a brand new video. The Southern California band Dig have sent us from their self-titled debut album. It's called Unlucky Friend. That was our last video, Sam. It was from our album Forbidden Places, and as you can see, we're a lot older now. We look quite a bit different. We're the Meat Puppets, and we're your guest hosts here tonight for 120 minutes. And that song, Sam. Derek, was that you singing? Well, it looked a lot like me on bass, but that's just because your hair is so much longer now that's than it used to be. because drumming is a hard job. Derek's not a handsome man. I actually played uh, plastic uh, rubber discs on my drum so that it wouldn't be too loud. Fantastic. Yeah. That's what I call giving 120%. Yeah, well, you know, that's not going to be the case later because we're going to be performing later, live. And we're going to play you the first video off our new album first, though. It's and called Backwater. It, that's right. Uh, we had long hair in that one. Well, we sort of did, but regardless of the amount of hair that we had, it was on this occasion that we actually achieved a 122 percentile rating in terms of our endeavor. You know, as far as coloring your hair goes, for any of you out there that have a nice white dog, see, we have this dog at home, his name is Kugel. I'd just like to say hi to him right now. Kugel! And to my other dog, Rosie, and all the other dogs out there, in the world. Innocent little doggy. And, uh, you know, loves when we little Kugel is all white, and you could color your dog, dude. You know what else you can do, ladies and gentlemen? You can feed your children food coloring. You can, Infants. up to a certain age. Yep. After a certain age, it will be rejected. Anyway, here's the video backwater from the new Meat Puppets album. back. 
like water swirling There is something that'll never change And when I should have been done a long time It laughs and says I find ways Just when we're sheltered under paper The rockets come at us sideways Something will never change Henry Rollins and the Mighty Rollins Band with Liar here on 120 Minutes. And I'd just like to disagree with Henry for a moment if I could. I think making music to hurt people is a perfectly viable reason. And I'd like to start with you, Hank. Henry's going to be our guest host here on 120 Minutes next week. And I'd like to officially challenge him to a fight. Wow, that's intense. Right Spe now. Speaking of fightings, I had this dream the other night that I was swimming through, you know, those things that are in trays and people put little macaronis in one compartment and then the next there's a different macaroni or lentils or something. And it forms like a, a, a mosaic thing. I had this dream, this repeating dream that I'm swimming through those different compartments, but it's filled with different kinds of breakfast cereal. We're the Meat Puppets and we're your hosts tonight. We'll be performing live a little bit later. Right after the break, it's a brand new one from North Carolina band called Archers of Loaf. Stick around. Stop and look at what you've done The plateau's clean, no dirt to be seen In the work, it was fun Nothing on the top but a bucket and a mop And an illustrated book about birds See a lot up there, but don't be scared Who needs action when you got words? That song is called Plateau that's an old song uh, off of our second album. It's about 10 years old, and uh, that's uh, so from the Unplugged session we did with Nirvana a few months back. Uh, pro 
probably my only real collaboration with a uh, other band, other people outside of playing Louie Louie with Black Flag a few times. Here's uh, a new thing that we have here, this, this creature down here, please. This is a collaborator. This is our collaborator. He may look real, he's not. Join this is, us. This is Troy Mice. He's also known as Roger Perrier. Uh, he's he's uh, the guitar player we have with us. And uh, uh, our musical counterpart. We're the Meat Puppets and we're your guest hosts for 120 minutes tonight. Uh, when we did that uh, unplug session we also played an old song of ours called Lake of Fire and uh, we'll be performing that song live a little later on but right now we've got a brand new video from a North Carolina band called Archers of Loaf. Their debut album Icky Metal came out last fall and this is their first video for a song called Web in Front. Stuck a pin in your backbone, spoke it down from there. From fumbling toward ecstasy, that's Sarah McLaughlin with Possession, here on 120 Minutes. We're the Meat Puppets, and we'll be performing live for you a little later on. Right after the break, we'll have a Meat Puppets cult classic clip. Stay with us. Will you come back when you're present? You're watching 120 minutes on MTV. You may be saying to yourself, wasn't Thurston Moore supposed to be guest hosting tonight? Well, yes, and here he is now. Thurston! Hi, everyone! We're glad you could stop by. I love you. Huh. Bye! No, seriously. Make it. Hopefully, he'll visit 120 minutes again real soon. We are the Meat Puppets, your guest hosts tonight. We'll be performing live for you a little later on. Right now, though, we're going to play you a cult classic from our 87 album, Mirage. It's called Get On Down, and it was made in 1987. And it's a dedication video. Little Sally called and asked us to play it for her dog, Snuckles. <laughs> Snuckles. Have you heard of the Crinkles? Now, the part you're about to see in here with the lawnmower is simulated, so... Don't get any misconceptions. It was filmed in our home. In our backyard. It features some of our spawn. Yep. And our old pal Rob Tucker did it for us. That's right. With us. For us and with us. That's how we do everything. We're into everything. So here it is. Get on down from us, the Meat Puppets.
I'm Kurt. And I'm Chris. And I'm Derek. We're the Meat Puppets, and we're your special guest hosts for the second 60 of MTV's 120 Minutes. In the next hour, we'll be performing live for you, and we'll have alternative music videos from Mud Honey, Whale, Lisa Loeb, Morrissey, who I'd also like to challenge to a fight, Lucy's Fur Coat, Material Issue, Pavement, and lots more. We're going to kick things off here first with the uh, first video off of Hole's second album, Live Through This. It's called Miss World. Slowbo humping Slowbo Babe, the debut video from a Swedish trio called Whale here on 120 Minutes. We're the Meat Puppets and we're your guest hosts for 120 Minutes tonight. Right now we're going to perform a song that originally appeared on our second album, Meat Puppets 2, which came out back in 83 and now a new version of it is on our eighth album, Too High to Die. It's called Lake of Fire. Take it away, you handsome slobs. song was called Light, and that's off of our album Monsters, and uh, that was a, a eulogy about the actual thing that light is, the uh, stuff that you see, and all the different lights that you don't see, and... Uh, and what is light? Well, light's sort of similar to the, uh, it's... It's kind of like heat, but it's more illusory. Yeah, actually, I'm not a scientist, and I don't really care what light really is. That's just an excuse to do something. 
We're the Meat Puppets, and we're your guest hosts tonight. Next up, we've got a brand new video from Mud Honey, and it's not off their latest EP, Five Dollar Bob's Mock Cooter Stew. It's a song and video they contributed to an upcoming film called PCU, or Politically Correct University, starring David Spade of Saturday Night Live, and it's a cover of El Elvis Costello's classic, Pump It Up. The video was directed by Jeff Stein, who also worked on the Who film, The Kids Are All Right. Here it is, but first here is Mud, Mud Honey frontman Mark Arm giving you his take on alternative music. Alternative to music, to actual music, is like huge stuff like MC Hammer, which isn't music at all. It's just like this programmed computer. <laughs> tonight, still to come tonight, we got a brand new one from the Lone Unknown on the Reality Bite soundtrack. Lisa Loeb, the latest from Pavement, and right after the break, Chicago's Material Issue. Welcome back to 120 Minutes with the Meat Puppets, and we're your guest hosts tonight. Still to come, we've got Pavement's Cut Your Hair video and a visit with the lone unknown on the Reality Bites soundtrack, Lisa Loeb. Uh, we happen to come from Phoenix. Happen to, I say, because uh, nobody Derek comes was from born there intentionally. No, yeah, no choice. None of us had any choice, and we still live there. Uh, when we started out, it was a stark environment, and it still is stark. Uh, any way you look at it, musically, whatever, culturally. Uh, there's a lot of neat bands that have come out of Phoenix, though, I think. Yeah, uh, other bands, there's tons of other bands. There's and, the uh, Sun City Girls. It's in the desert, too. They've moved out of Phoenix. Oh, they did? Yeah, they yep. live in Portland now, the Sun City Girls. Some... The Jim Blossoms are from Phoenix. The Jim Blossoms, Blossoms those guys. are from Tempe. Tempe. And they don't uh, there's uh, the it. Feeders, there's Victory Acres, there's... Dwayne Eddy, Dwayne Marty Eddie. Robbins, Marty Alice Robbins Cooper, Stevie Phoenix. Nicks, Alice Cooper, who's you? Tanya Tucker. The list just keeps, keeps on going. going. Keep going. Steven Spielberg. There's tons of people from Phoenix. There's too many people there right now, and uh, that's why we've come up with our concept, which is leaving there as often as possible. Now back to videos now, and the latest from Chicago's Material Issue. This is the first video off their third album, Freak City Soundtrack, and it's called Kim the Waitress. Thanks for staying up late with 120 minutes to host tonight. Tune in next Sunday at midnight and see Henry. That'll be uh, midnight, 11 Central, with uh, Henry Rollins. He'll be here to display his many and sundry bruises and contusions that me and that tough guy Morrissey are going to give him. But in the meantime, don't get your bowels in an uproar. Go on home and say, hell, television, I like that. Come on, give your TV a big kiss. The final video on tonight's show come from Lisa Loeb and her band, Nine Stories. Never hear of her? Well, she's on the soundtrack to the Winona Ryder movie, Reality Bites, and her video is directed by Ethan Hawke, who's also in the film. Still no? Well, here's Allison Stewart from MTV News with a report. So when you go see the movie Reality Bites, stick around through the credits. And that was good. I'm damn. That was good. Way to go, Lisa. Although I thought you were a little bit smarty pants here, and I'd like to challenge you to a fight as well. You know what I always say? I truly love and appreciate the works of another. Um, and uh, now I'll give you my best imitation of the giant vacuum of space. Uh, stay, the final video on 120 Minutes tonight was what you just saw. Send your comments, suggestions, and cult classic requests to 1515 Broadway, 24th floor, New York, New York, 10036. Uh, that's crazy. That's really, really experimental, highly volatile equipment that you just fired that projectile. Let him and does it. Not only is he a pugilist, but he's also a vandal. I'd like to fight David Letterman as well. The whole thing we have going here, though, in reality, you know, aside from all the foo foo ra, is a band. We have an actual musical thing that we do, and uh, we're still doing it. To later on the show, the I'll be us. beating these two senseless. Uh, there is no later. This is about the end. This is about to cap it off right so here. So start it. Come on. Let's see you do something. Band update. And the, in terms of the band update, we are going to go out on tour here. We're here doing this thing. We've been touring on our new album. We're uh, going to go out and 
and uh, open up some shows for the Stone Temple Pilots for a couple months starting in June. And uh, before that, we'll do some shows with Cracker and our own selves. We're the Meat Puppets. I'd just like to remind those bands that the things they think are theirs are actually mine. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> Re rearranging the precepts of reality, we have here this bad imitation of a human being. And uh, we're the Meat Puppets. We've been your guest host tonight. Uh, check out 120 next Sunday at midnight, 11 Central, when Henry Rollins will be here to do the same thing. And don't forget about Kennedy Weeknights at 1230 <laughs> for Alternative Nation. Thanks for watching and for 120 minutes. We're the Meat Puppets. Bye. musical guest this week.
Meat puppets. It's an inspirational place to live in a lot of ways, musically and just for life in general. You know, you can get all over the place in your mind because there's just nothing to do here. Plus, we play guitar a lot. We named the band after one of our songs that sounded like a proper noun. We had a song called Me Puppets, and it was about, you know, just what th people do, stuff like that. But then I thought it was a cool name for the band. <laughs> Derek, are you a handsome man? Um, I'm not. I'm not really a handsome man. Where's my latest TV Guide cover? Is that around? I get it. I get it. I just like defaced TV Guide covers and stuff. Oh yeah, this is good. Yeah. Right, Nancy <laughs> Kerrigan. Nancy Kerrigan. It just goes on and on. <laughs> this is a pretty good one. <laughs> <laughs> I first met the, the Kirkwood brothers over at a mutual friend's house. I uh, met him New Year's Eve of 77. He was with a friend of ours, Anthony. And both of them were tiny and kind of stooped. They saw the instruments lying around and got the idea that we played. And uh, we began to run into each other uh, as we all began to cross-pollinate our friendships. And everyone fell away from us disgusted by the three of us in general, so we realized we were stuck with each other. It's kind of like what we always said when we were supposed to be a hardcore band, that we, 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 we weren't hardcore. We had a hardcore, but we weren't hardcore. <laughs> Tonight on the Jon Stewart Show, from The Mask, Cameron Diaz, actress Alicia Silverstone, author Mark Lehner, and live music from Meat Puppets. And now, here's your host, Jon Stewart! also auditioned for that, but didn't end up getting it, but uh, it came close. Hey, this is what we've got coming up the rest of the week. Uh, Dennis Leary, Bobby Bonilla, Brendan Fraser, House of Pain, Sonic Youth. Uh, it's going to be a nice week. So uh, anyway, right now we should get to uh, this. After years spent influencing bands like uh, Soul Asylum and Nirvana, my next guests are finally getting the attention they deserve performing Lake of Fire from their album Too High to Die. Please welcome Meat Puppets.
performing Wednesdays at the Cotton Club, and of course, Meat Puppets. They're gonna play us another song. Here they are performing Backwater.
I'm Matt Pinfield, and sitting with me now are the Meat Puppets, who have a new album out called No Joke. But of course, uh, they're not a new band. They don't have just two albums out now. They've been going, going for a long time. They've been on SST before that, and uh, it's been about 15 years or so with some great albums like Up on the Sun, and me discovering what Huevos meant by, you know, your records. Let me, let me ask you guys how you came to be on SST. I'd heard before that Greg Ginn uh, from Black Flag was the guy who discovered you, but is that true? Did he see you guys live? How did that all come down? Well, he had seen us live, and uh, they he'd were, also heard a record of ours. Though yeah. we already had a yeah, a, we had records out. Uh, our first seven inch came out on a label called World Imitation. It was uh, a label run by this band called Monitor out in Los Angeles, um, and their bass player Laurie O'Connell, who got to know and them through a friend of ours named David Wiley, who was the lead singer in a band called The Human Hands, and he had been in a band called The Consumers, who was from Phoenix and moved out there. Uh, with a bunch of other Phoenicians, including like Paul Cutler, uh, who went on to be in like uh, 45 Grave and Dream Syndicate. Right. And Jimmy Gersetti, who became Don Bowles and was the drummer in the Germs. Right, the Germs are cool. And, and the whole thing is that, uh, so I mean, it's one of those things where it just happens kind of organically, people mm -hmm. going from time to time. We all knew each other. Discovered is kind of the wrong word. Yeah. We all discovered so we each other. We had the 70 shot and yeah. we're, we were gigging and we did a, a show in Phoenix and uh, with, and with Black Flag, we met him that night, and they liked us and invited us to come over and play uh, in Los Angeles with them. And we went and played at this club called the Cuckoo's Nest in Huntington Beach, which was like this punk rock, you know, hardcore, you know, skinhead cool. <laughs> kind of vibe thing. And uh, damn, it was the first night that Henry played with him in L.A. And, and he's, you know, it was like the new singer for Flag, and he was, you know, all buff and kick out to rise above and like, going wow. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, let's, let's talk a bit about the fact that, I mean, Two I to Die was all of a sudden here's, you're on a bigger label, major label, and you have a big hit. How was that to deal with after all those years? Was that kind of surprising? Was it? Did it shock you? Was it? You just said whatever. How did, how did you deal with that, Kurt? Um, I didn't think about it very much. It didn't really make anything any different because it's still. I mean, if I'd have had to change instruments or something, it might have been hard. Right. Otherwise, it was just something that was, you know, just the next thing, right? Yeah, you know, it, it made, made things uh, a little bit easier, but still, you know, you just play. And uh, in a way, it, it almost helps uh, if you got, got anything else on your mind at that time, it could kind of take care of it, and you can re kind of realize, well, that's that, and music's music, and you get back to the music even a little more if nothing else. Right, exactly. I know you're talking about the focus on that. And let's, uh, why don't we show that video right now? We Let's go back to uh, Too High to Die. Here's the uh, song known as Backwater on 120 Minutes. That's the Boston Trio Helium with the title of their Super Bowl EP, and I just I love her. I think she's really cool. Here on 120 Minutes, I'm Matt Pinfield, and this, of course, the Me Puppets. We've gotten a lot of email from viewers who've sent some questions for the band, and here's one of them. And this is, uh, and they've got all your names right, too, mm -hmm. and that's really cool. It says, Kurt, Chris, Derek, what is sweet ammonia, and does it have anything to do with a chemical garden? How many albums have you released now, and are you touring? And that is from Wendell Bowen of Northern Virginia. All right, what, what do you what do you say to Wendell? Sweet. Wendell, my man. Sweet ammonia is, uh, is uh, a new product. It's a pleasantly flavored ammonia. And, uh, it's, it's um, a new scented, we have 11 albums. fresh scented cat pee. You can drink, uh, it's ammonia that you can, you can uh, clean up with and, and also <laughs> drink at the same time. So, um, Are you serious? You really can? Well, I haven't gotten yeah. made yet, but okay. it's, it's like, a, it's an idea. So it kind of cleans out the insides. It's a, it's yeah. It's hot food. I just think it'll be a big seller. And um, uh, 11 albums, I think, and on tour, it's starting to, Friday, cool. whenever this that is. Loves me. It I does love you, It's supposed Chris. to be Sunday. Oh, love you. You, uh, I guess it will have started. The so tour. you're gonna be on the road basically. I mean, you, from the time you start seeing the show, which is right this moment here in the middle of the night, you're probably, you know. We'll be on tour by then. We'll be in. Absolutely. Yep. Stick around because we'll be talking more with the Meat Puppets. And right after the break, we've got a brand new one from an Arizona band called Mr. Merengue. First, here's a look at the top ten albums on Alternative Radio this week. <laughs> Yeah, 
make it a statement to make about something they had an experience. Possibly stand with a different opinion and nobody ever considered it important. Maybe they had a ridiculous statement to make about something they had an experience. Possibly stand with a different opinion and nobody ever considered it important. And we're back with the Meat Puppets. I'm at Pinfield, and uh, God, I haven't seen that in a while, you know? Fine. I'm the Us. first. Us neither. Right? What do you think? Is it weird seeing the old videos How about again? you? The, the average TV fan it's, hasn't seen that very much. Um, no. no. It doesn't matter, right? <laughs> uh, I forgot that we did that one until now. But <laughs> <laughs> the first one, right? That's cool. Tell me a bit about the new record, No Joke. First of all, what's the title or reference to? Uh, it's just a... My daughter did the drawing, and she wrote no joke on there, so I don't know what it means. And I asked her, she said, it means it's no joke. That's cool, you fuck. You she doesn't to like to the, the uh, cover. She doesn't like it. She doesn't like it, her artwork afterwards? She kind of... No, nah, she's just being modest. She yeah. likes it. But it's cool. She must be pretty psyched that I have her, have her artwork mm -hmm. on the album. It's Kurt's daughter, Catherine. That's right. And Elmo, his son Elmo, did the back cover artwork. Great. Speaking of artwork, you do a lot of stuff, too, Chris. You've always done a lot of drawing yeah. and... Uh, we all do. Great stuff. Yeah. All of you are involved. Are you yeah, still we, painting? You're still on a different... Mm -hmm. You know, we've always used band art on the covers of the things and whatnot. You know, you get to make the record, and it's like, they come in a little paper container, you know? <laughs> well, we should put something on it, uh, an image of some sort. I mean, from the beginning, you've done most, I'm like, well, almost all the artwork, haven't you? Up yeah. on, the, on all the sleeves, right? Everything's been well, those, I like those were Kurt's paintings on yeah. the cover. Right. Anything with, like, the thick acrylic brushstroke stuff's Kurt's. And then the uh, Mirage, the cover of Mirage was a watercolor by Derek. And there's a, a SST compilation that has one of my drawings on the cover. Of Which it, comp you know? is it? It's called No Strings Attached. I remember so that one. It's, it's cool. the only comp. Yeah. yeah, No Strings Attached. Yeah, they made that, you know, without even, you know, telling us they were going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest hits. Hey! I think it's really cool, though, that you, that you look, have the family members, your kids, that do the artwork, and have them follow in your footsteps because, you know, it's, you know, doing it your own way. We make them do it. You do? <laughs> no. <laughs> they were at camp when we chose the art. Oh, that's cool. Man, Joe, no shut up. Is, is it, <laughs> don't be laughing over there. Has anybody seen the? Uh, has anybody seen the key Talking to the about my children? Down seen there. the key to the kid's cage? Up next, it's a new one from another Arizona band, and I think it's really pronounced Mr. Moringa. But you know, it's sometimes it sounds like Moringa to me. But they're a cool band, though. I'm not. I'm not dissing the name. I'm just saying that I might have mispronounced it before. This song between is between the break. Matt was making fun of you guys, Moringa. No, I'm just kidding. This song is on the soundtrack. Yeah, Actually, I love it. it. Uh, to the upcoming film Ace Ventura: When Nature Calls. Calls, uh, which also features a song from the Goo Goo Dolls and Matthew Sweet, President of the United States of America. Their own uh, album, though, is coming out. They had an EP college radio was playing called F the Scene. And there's a rec song on this album that is nothing but Spanish, um, uh, four-letter words done in Spanish. So it's, it's pretty what cool. What do you think they mean by that, F the Scene? I'm not sure. But here's Mr. Moringa with Burning Rubber. Ben's house one day just requesting songs on the radio and um, someone wanted to request a Nirvana song and we weren't real keen on it and it was Sliver I think it was and um, we wanted to request a, a song by You Am I and it's called Berlin Chair and um, I went to write it down abbreviate and I wrote Silver Chair not Sliver Chair with the second clip off their second album, Frog Stomp, that's Silver Chair with Pure Massacre here on 120 Minutes. Sorry about my voice today. I've been sick for a week, and it's, I'm dropping off a little bit. Hey, I'm here, and I want to be here because I love the music, and I'm with you. I'm at Pivot. I'm sitting next to the Meat Puppets, and we got another email question for you guys. I hope you, you, you're cool with this, uh, and I know the answer to this, but I think We only like to answer the questions from professionals, but go ahead. Well, then, I'm, then I guess you don't like me answering my, my questions either, because I'm not professional. I said go ahead. <laughs> is, is it true you guys are deadheads? If so, how is it that your music is so hard? What is the connection, if any, between hippie music and punk? And that's from Lisa Ann Milburn from Lawrence, Kansas. Well, no, we're not deadheads, and the connection is is that they're both media slang. Right. The fact is, I mean, you are a big fan of What jazz. else did they, they ask? Um, well, yeah, I, li I, I like, I like a, you know, I like guitar playing. You know, I just like the guitar. I like, uh, you know, people ask me, what do you think about this? I, I, I'll answer that question with a little interpretive dance. I enjoyed that. I think Ralph Macchio summed yeah, it up that best. That was a karate kid thing. I'm really enjoying that, Chris. But no, all right, so I hope we... You know, the, the, that's the thing that we've always brought to that little musical thing or whatever, is this, you know, ability to, like, ignore any of the, like, hard, soft or whatever and, and just go, music, ah. It all sucks. Right. <laughs> 
Thanks, and uh, Lisa, I remember we hope that, uh, that answered your question. Well, stick around because we've got the MTV premiere from The Passengers coming up, and right after the break, we've got the Meat Puppets new video, so, so stay with us. I was us. sitting there writing moist pamphlet, and I actually wrote <laughs> Meat Pinfield, and this is the Meat Puppets on 120 Minutes. And uh, I want to thank you guys for coming down and hanging out with us tonight. What do we win? Um, you win uh, America Online MTV Online T-shirt, 120 Minutes hat, uh, the new special uh, apron bib, and uh, some shorts and diapers for uh, your next group of children. Feed me. I watch MTV. <laughs> Okay, that's a wonderful thing. He's speaking to feed me, I'll come out. Uh, a six time. month supply of high quality George Jones country gold dog and cat food. I appreciate that. Can we say hello to our pets? We need to, real quick, before, before we go into scum, I got a real quick ask you about it. David Markey um, had done the, uh, you know what, can we stop this? The whole Chiron thing was wrong. I, I, I said goodbye to them before we talked about the video. You're supposed to do that first. I thought you were going to segue Question. back there. That's well, it wasn't it. Really Pinfield, and this is 120 Minutes. We're back with the Meat Puppets. Let's talk a bit about the new video. Uh, you know, at the Scum, it's really cool. It's really animated, you know, the thing with you driving the trucks and going around. You work with David Markey, who's a friend of yours. He did Sonic Youth and Nirvana stuff, but, you know, a long time ago, he was also involved in a project you guys did, uh, the Love Doll Superstar, Desperate Teenage Love Dolls, those cool California films with yeah. Red Cross music and uh, just all the other stuff. Tell me a bit about how you got to know him and how that all came about. He used to be in a band, uh, what's, what band Painted, Painted Willie. Painted Willie. Yeah, I think yeah, he, yeah. he came through town with them first time we met him about yeah. 10 years ago. He's he started one of those making that movie. LA guys, one of the South Bay area down there. Yeah. There's all these people that knew each other, and they knew the SST guys, and a bunch of those folks like grew up together or near each other, the Red Cross people, and like the Circle Jerks, some of those guys. Yeah. And he had a list of company. kids. We Got Power. And David, right. yeah, they've got the We Got Power. And Dave, Dave Markey, had, you know, was into the filmmaking thing. and. And he came up with that love, love Dolls thing, and then they actually became a band. And uh, their bass player, Abby, is now playing with Elastica from that band. Right. Love Dolls. So that's love everybody. Dolls. They all love Dolls. And Dave, and Dave made, like you said, he made that Nirvana, uh, or the uh, Sonic Youth movie about 1992 and oh, your oh, punk right. broke. And Tell me about how you came up with the concept for this video itself. Is that something that, that you had elaborated with on David? Because it's, like I said, all the animation is kind of, it's really crazy. It's a little different for you. Yeah. For yours? Yeah. He, uh, he, he he wanted to have us in the with the street cleaner getting knocked into the sewer and then playing that was in the a sewer. Great scene, sliding down. And then I and I, I just uh, wanted to add all this other stupid stuff. So we just sat around and I said, you know, I want to have a silver face in there. A rabbit know. mask. I want to have uh, Boston with the rabbit mask. Uh, That's me. I want yeah. I want to have a little. T I want I wanted to. Uh, to have a little village, you know. I wanted, wanted everything to be fake. I didn't want to have to go out and film anything for real. So we, you know. So it's really animated, like it's a, all a, shot a on green screen, and then we just, you know, they just put it in there. So the little village is actually about the size of a tabletop, and the the only real thing that we did was uh, go and had a sewer. I built. We had our own sewer hammer. built. Yeah. We had yeah, our own sewer. We imported our own slime. Sli uh, you know, special what? slime. Sewer yeah. Scum. Yeah. I love that scum. It's it's human runoff. <laughs> And there um, was another opportunity for us to <laughs> drag our old friends into the, you know, into whatever, into the like, 
uh, you know, above ground, well, you know, it's, it's the cool. moles were. It's really into, uh, the yeah, top, and I like that a lot. Our, Like we had our friend Joseph Kaltai's work on our last. Uh, what a gracious, famous photos. person you are. It's because it's sort of like repaying all those old favors we're, influence we're wise. Givers, not takers. <laughs> <laughs> we're, wanna, they're they're going to make me up. Uh, could play a video now, so I want to thank you guys for stopping by tonight. But I always enjoy talking to you. And right now, we're going to play your new video so you can see all the stuff we're talking about. This is Scum on 120 Minutes. These gifts should come from their own. So off to Wall Street I went to meet the rich and to raise money for our neediest corporation, Exxon. In 1994, a jury ordered Exxon to pay $5 billion in damages for the Valdez oil spill. I figured, what better way to help Exxon than a benefit concert? There was Live Aid, then Farm Aid. It was time now for Corp Aid. So we got a flatbed truck, parked it on Wall Street, and asked the meat puppets to play our very own corporate anthem. You always hear people cry about the little guy getting the nose. But who will take care of the big guy? who share the dream of being free and proud and really, really rich. We are all corporations, and it's time to say enough. No more fines, no regulations. Set us free to do our stuff. We're going to need to make a few announcements. Uh, people, there's some uh, bad investment tips going around. Stay away from the 20-year uni bonds. <laughs> Stay away from that stuff, it'll kill ya. There's a day is coming soon, you can see it coming round. When the whole world over looks just like Prince William Sound. Cause we're all corporations in our own way. Making profits and get fun, still making way. I think we're gonna go live to our Corp A concert taking place in London right now. London, England, Corp A. I'm not sure when the jam finally ended. Everyone was still grooving to the good vibes when I had to leave with a bucket full of donations and make my way to Exxon country. You know, Entertainment Weekly predicts that this group will be bigger than the Beatles. Forbidden Places is their latest at CD. Please welcome Meat Puppets. Thank you. 
Mexico Told me not to drink the water And not to touch the food Oh, it's got his Pepsi-Cola And I know that that won't hold you Remember that we told you No one else knows what's in store Remember that we told you last year. Just imagine being picked in the top 10 of the best albums of the entire year by the LA Times. Well, that honor went to the last album for the Meat Puppets. They're a Phoenix group, but they're really known around the country and around the world. I'm sitting here reading some quotes, and even from England, it's called uh, one of the, the musical express there said, possibly the most inventive demonstration of the interplay between guitar, bass, and drums ever recorded. They are near virtuosos, three of the most inspired musicians under the sun. Well, they are under our lights in the Finn and Friends studio. I'd like them to do from their Up on the Sun album, their brand new album, their single, which is getting airplay across the country. This is Swimming Ground, the Meat Puppets on Finn and Friends.
coverage on Finn and Friends. You guys have a lot of fans in the studio here. We should introduce everybody. It's Kurt Kirkwood, uh, Chris Kirkwood, and uh, back here, Derek Bostrom. Uh, you guys are brothers, obviously, and you're the odd man out and all. Where do I even start with this? The, the odd man in. Uh, it's an independent album that's, uh, the song's being rated number one on the, for independence releases around the country. With all the quotes that I talked about there, do you guys feel like you're, you know, you're not as well respected in your hometown as you are around the rest of the world? Uh, no, not really. I don't think it's a, a lack of respect so much as just a, a concentration, a concentration in, in the other towns where we've garnered that press of, you know, music press types. As, you know, there's not just not that many in Phoenix. Yeah, I had quotes from a couple of different L.A. papers that are talking about you guys being the uh, the new type of America music, and, and this is where it's headed, and the innovation and all that kind of stuff. When you hear that, why don't you move over to L.A.? Why do you stay here in Phoenix? Uh, clean water hole. Clean water hole. <laughs> yeah, everybody over there drinks out of the same water, you know, it, so to speak. It's not. I mean, that's you know, a, 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 what's that called? A, so to speak, yeah, Every, so to, yeah, all yeah. the other musicians. We're not talking about water here. We're talking no, about something more. Right. Yeah. Analogy. That's right. You write. You've written everything on the album here. When when you sit down to write, what are you uh, doing? Are you writing along in the car and you think of something, or do you sit down at a typewriter and force yourself to do it? And uh, no, I whenever I think of something clever, you yeah. know, I, I I remember that that's what I'm supposed to do is to is to put it down on tape, so I remember it. Well. Uh, they put it down on tape, and they uh, do a nice job with their albums, too. Up on the Sun is the new album, and they'll perform another song from it right after this break on Finna Friends. Stay with us. <laughs> Travel arrangements for some of Finn and Friends guests are provided by Premier Limousines. When you need the best in luxury transportation, make Premier Limousines your choice. It's on Finn and Friends. Uh, Derek Bostrom, I haven't had a chance to ask you a question yet. I noticed you have cotton in your ear there. I mean, That's is right. it, you're not really crazy about the music or what? Well, it's not that. It's just that I've signed a contract with the cotton people when, when we were back east, and, and I'm plugging their product now. <laughs> Seriously, you said it's because you, you need to hear these guys, and you don't want to hear the cymbals. So. Well, you know, the, 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 the cymbals are really loud, and you can you notice after a couple of years that this year starts to lose some, and I definitely have lost some from this year. So we do play, you know, when we play out, we play every night for like, you know, six weeks, four weeks, every night, you know, it, it gets to, it start, you do start to lose a little bit. And, you know, give these guys a couple more years and they'll follow suit. All right. Well, you're uh, speaking of playing out at night. Tomorrow night at uh, the Mason Jar, Indian School in 24th, uh, you can see the Meat Puppets there. You can see them perform songs from their new album. If it's not in the record store, it's because they're probably sold out. So ask and they can order Up on the Sun, the Meat Puppets at your favorite local record store. You guys are going to do one more song for us. They told me you weren't singing, you are puckering up or something. What, is, what does yeah. that mean? Well, on this song, we, we whistle instead of sing. Uh, the new trend in rock and roll. No wonder Rolling Stone gave you guys four stars. Who, who would think to whistle out of rock and roll, right? Uh, I'm sure Elvis did it one Elvis time or another. It. Elvis did it. All right. Well, Elvis did it, but the Meat Bumps are going to do it live for us right now on Finn and Friends. Yeah? <laughs> Please welcome them one more time as we say goodnight with the Meat Puppets on Finn and Friends.
Avec vous ce soir, nous irons visiter quelques clubs de Los Angeles, ceux qui font les réputations. Et vous serez surpris, beaucoup de ces clubs ne valent pas la salle communale d'un village de Lozère. C'est pourtant là qui sont les femmes et que se lancent les groupes. Par exemple, les Meat Puppets. Pas de parade ce mois-ci. On souhaite à la place dire adieu à un chanteur qu'on aimait bien. C'était les Minutemen, un groupe non conformiste, à la tête du mouvement progressiste, adoré des étudiants, diffusé sur toutes les radios indépendantes. Dee Boone, le chanteur, s'est tué en voiture le mois dernier. Le voici une dernière fois dans une chanson inédite à la télévision. à votre voiture. À l'intérieur, pas une chaise et c'est encore tant mieux. C'est la place la plus chaude de Los Angeles. En concert, Black Flag.
violent, sans espoir, sombre. In that darkness, you know, you walk through there and you get to the light, you know. And it's just a continuous process of going down and coming up and going down and coming up. I mean, you'll never appreciate this love until you've actually really hated, you know. How can you? No way you can. And anyone who tells you that you can is a liar. You can't appreciate pleasure unless you know pain. You can't know joy unless you know something that's quite the opposite. So, yeah, I'm, I'm way, I'm very much in no life. Également sur Sunset Boulevard, le Roxy, le monde entier connaît. De jour, ce n'est pourtant pas grand chose. De nuit, on peut s'y tromper. La magie et la bière, on en déverse autant que de décibels. Ce club accueille pourtant tous les avant-gardistes, par exemple les mythes puppets. sont de Phoenix dans l'Arizona et habitent en plein désert. There's those funny the cactuses all around, you know, and then and the, the only thing that happen there that's any fun you have to make for yourself, you know. Ils ont démarré il y a 5 ou 6 ans, faisant un petit peu tout, du funk rock, du punk anglais, du new wave américain, du hardcore. Leur objectif alors, jouer fort et vite. Aujourd'hui, ils ne veulent plus se produire en même temps que ces groupes comme Oscar Dew ou Black Flag. Ils se sont assagis. I don't want to be spit on in any way. Yeah, you know, we've, we've, we've been I can care less we've been about it. We've been bombarded by, by, by you know, uh, narrow-minded audiences. And... Aujourd'hui, ils font du mythe puppet et ne peuvent être comparés à aucun autre groupe. Leur musique, leur son sont uniques à l'encontre des courants traditionnels. Ils ne s'adressent pas aux conservateurs du rock, aux foules qui suivent Phil Collins ou Duran Duran, mais à un public plus aventureux. Pas un de leurs concerts ne se ressemble. Ils sont en pleine évolution et donnés depuis leur dernier album comme un des meilleurs groupes américains.
termine ses musiques California avec les Meat Puppets qu'on vous a fait sans doute découvrir. Si vous avez quelques sous à parier sur leur avenir, allez-y, vous jouez gagnant.
in business never to return.
bands this evening. We're a little rushed for time, for God's sakes. We're going, for God's sake. This is called adhering to his time schedule. I hope you like it.
Mm-hmm.